Hi, my name is Darren Joseph from HGJ.tax, and we're a team of advisors, accountants, and lawyers who help investors, entrepreneurs, and experts navigate the somewhat confusing and arcane world of offshore taxation, cross-border taxation. Having said that, I may be a tax advisor, but I am not your tax advisor, at least not yet. So this is not advice. What I'm hoping to do is equip you with the tools that you need to choose the right advisory team to sit with and help you create the right structures and ensure that you're actually, actually compliant with the rules because the last thing you want to do is end up uh, on the wrong side of a, of a conversation with any tax authority, right? So we, we help you stay compliant. We have a website, hg.tax, with over 2,000 articles, over 1,000 videos where we talk about the, the world of offshore international tax. We're also hosting uh, a live in-person summit on offshore tax, on offshore structures, asset protection, second residencies, passports, etc. at the end of January in Portugal, in beautiful Portugal. Not in Portugal right now, I'm actually in Miami. I, I landed in Miami from Lisbon, Portugal yesterday because the, you know, during winter in Portugal, it gets a bit chilly and I prefer sunshine, but that's just me. But Portugal is so beautiful. I should be back there in a week or so. All right. Let's talk about social charges in Portugal or what in the U.S. we know as social security in, in Portugal, as in most European, most if not all European countries, social charges are a part of the, the agreement that you have with the, the governments for the privilege of living and working and earning money in those jurisdictions, depending on your situation, right? So this is a space that is filled with, with, with some confusion. So what I'm hoping this does is to demystify it as much as we can in a, a five minute video, right? So the first thing to point out is that in Portugal, the social charges would ordinarily be payable on earned income. So if it is that you are, like many of our clients, you are an expat, you are American, and you are in Portugal under the NHR, the non-habitual residence scheme, which we discussed in another video, you can have a look at that. So that's, that's your position, and most of your income is passive in nature, then social charges may not apply to you. But if it is that you're earning income, it may apply. So that's the first thing. That distinction between earned and unearned income. The second thing is that the second thing to bear in mind is that there is a bit of a benefit or an incentive from the Portugal authorities for the first year that you reside in Portugal. Even if you have earned income, you can get a waiver. So for the first year, you would not be subject to social charges. So, that, you know, social charges are on the higher side because in the U.S., it's 15.3 in Portugal, it's in the low 20s. So it's, you know, there's a bit of a delta there. So there's a bit of a, uh, an upswing that you, if it is that you get a year off from that, that could be pretty attractive. Now, now that I've introduced the, the whole idea of the US versus Portugal, now I can talk about something called the totalization agreement. I think there's a high degree of understanding on the double tax treaty between Portugal and, and the US. So, oh, you know, the US and various jurisdictions with whom or with which a uh, DTA is in force. So I think there's a lot of discussion and a lot of understanding around it. Where there's not where there's not much of an awareness is on the totalization agreements. And you know, we 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 frequently get calls from other advisors who want to kind of get up to speed on that. So that's something we're happy to do. We don't, we don't just work with clients, we work with your advisors as well, who may need some clarity on how things work in the international space. So <coughs> the totalization agreement is, <coughs> the, it creates uh, an understanding between two jurisdictions, in this, case, in this case, the US and Portugal, where there's mutual recognition of the social security uh, arrangements in each of the, of the two jurisdictions. It's also known in some spaces as a bilateral agreement, and it seeks to eliminate the du dual social security. So the first thing I want to point out, it will seek to eliminate dual social security coverage and payments, right? So if someone from one country is working in the other, so like if you're, 
if you're an independent contractor from the US and you're working in Portugal, in the absence of a totalization agreement, you may be subject to social charges in Portugal and social charges in the US at the same time, which is not obviously ideal. So it eliminates that. So that, that's first and foremost, and that's super important. Secondly, if it is that you're spending time in, in the other jurisdiction on a temporary basis, there's a recognition of the, the credits that you paid into that system. So for example, in the US, you need at least 10 years or 40 quarters, I think it is, in order to qualify for social security later on in life. If it is you spend part of that time in Portugal, the time, and then you go back to the US, for example, the time that you would have spent in Portugal paying into that system will count into those quarters. So that, that's mutual recognition. That's the second point that's super important. Uh, another thing is that if it is that you work for a US employer, you're American, you're US exposed, you work for an American employer, and then that American employer uh, allows you or seconds you to, to work in Portugal for a number of reasons. Maybe there's a, an affiliated company, a subsidiary, or a particular client that they want you to work with, or you're just working remotely, whatever the case may be. You and you perhaps you stay in Portugal is temporary in nature for the uh, you know within five years, let's say you would be able to qualify for uh relief so you don't have to pay into the Portugal system on the basis that you're already paying into the US. So, so that that five year relief that that's fantastic because as we mentioned, there's a bit of a delta between the difference between Portugal and the US, you, you get to benefit from that. Uh, but of course, and, and that's something that we get a lot of misunderstanding. I think it was last week, somebody reached out to us and, you know, some other advisor, who, yeah, that's okay because these areas are kind of confusing unless you're there personally, you have experience, you have clients, you have colleagues who are qualified and experienced as well. So they thought that as an independent contractor, so basically a 1099 contractor, that they would be able to enjoy that relief where they only pay into the US only and they relief from Portugal would actually no. So we had to explain to them you had to actually be, be a W2. So you need to be you need to have a contract for employment or a contract uh, for services independent contractor with a US employer in order to benefit from that. So you know you need to probably get you need to get documentation from the US, you need to get a certificate of coverage uh, and stuff like that. Uh, documentation for the employer has to be aware of that. That's another question that we got. You know, suppose I don't want my employer to know <laughs> that I'm working from Portugal. Well, you probably, first of all, you need, you know, some of the documentation may need sign off from your employer before you present it to Portugal. But more importantly, because of another, so I'm switching from the totalization agreement back to the tax treaty. I'm going to talk about something called permanent establishment. And uh, that's a, a bit of nuance, and that's going to take another 15 minute video. But just to cut to the chase, if it is, depending on your role with your employer in the US, depending on what it is you do for this employer, the level within the organization, you may expose your US employer to Portugal corporate tax by virtue of working there. So this is not something you want to do on the down low at all. You need to, have, you need to be open and transparent with your employer as to where you are working remotely because it may have consequences at a corporate tax level. So hope that helps. Again, Darren Joseph, HGJ.tax. We are having, uh, for those who are watching this video before the end of January 2023, we are uh, having an in-person summit at the end of January. Just have a look at our website, HGJ.tax, forward slash events. And we do live streams every week as well. We're taking a break for the holidays, but from mid-January, we're going to start our weekly live streams where we're going to talk about the whole world of offshore taxation and structuring and stuff like that. Hope this was useful. See you next time. So if you're a six, seven, or eight-figure investor, entrepreneur, or business owner who needs a tailor-made solution from a qualified team of professionals, we can help you achieve the international lifestyle, the freedom, and even the tax savings you're looking for. Visit us at htj.tax and live that international life.